Hi, I'm Taryn and welcome to my channel. In this video, I will be talking about my first impressions of Charleston, South Carolina. In this video, I won't get too into the specifics of where I live, where I work, etc. just because I need to maintain privacy and Charleston is a lot smaller than other places that I've lived. I just don't want to be too descriptive or too detailed because again, privacy and safety is very important. I moved to Charleston, South Carolina about a little over three months ago, but I'm familiar with the area because I'm born and raised in South Carolina specifically. Columbia, South Carolina. I moved here for a job and one of the first things that I noticed was that the rent is really, really high no matter where you look in the tri-county area just about, especially to get an apartment with nice amenities, updated appliances, all that, just things that you look for when moving to a new place. The cost of living here is pretty high, especially to not have a good public transportation system. I just feel like when you live in a city with really high rent, it's kind of a thing to have a good public transportation system just to kind of offset some of the other costs of how you live. You might not need a car, etc. but if you move to Charleston, you definitely need a car unless you live in an area where maybe the buses are better situated for you to get to where you need to go. This is not a place to move if you don't have a car. Food wise, obviously being close to the water, you're going to have a lot of seafood restaurants and other than that, it's going to be a lot of American restaurants. Once you venture out more into the tri-county area and even more into the low country area, you do have a little bit more diversity when it comes to restaurants and food options, but overall it's a lot of like American food and seafood, which I'm not surprised about at all, but it would be nice to have a little bit more diversity. You have a couple of Italian restaurants, Mexican restaurants, some Asian restaurants, some Caribbean restaurants, more so in like the Goose Creek, Mont's Corner area, and then I think some in North Charleston, but other than that, it's kind of mostly American and seafood restaurants. I wanted to shout out some of my favorites like Nigel's who is opening a third location Cuban Jitsi Parlor which has two locations in El Molino which also has a supermarket with a bakery. Uh, food. The food here is really good. Even some of the local items that you can get from the grocery store are super good. I always say that I feel like South Carolina has a really great resource when it comes to buying local foods from grocery stores. I will say that when I'm looking at places to live I look at the grocery stores available to that area. If you want to go to Trader Joe's or Whole Foods, you're gonna have to go to Mount Pleasant. There is a Whole Foods in West Ashley, but there's also Earth Bear, which is kind of similar to both of those stores. You'll have Harris Teeter. There's no Kroger because there's Harris Teeter and they're owned by the same people. You have Aldi and Lidl. You have your Walmart, Bilo, Piggly Wiggly, and you have your Food Lion, of course. If you pay attention, you'll notice that there are many food deserts in the Charleston area. If you would like to support food justice, please consider supporting an organization like Fresh Future Farm that works to provide food justice to communities. Diversity, I would say diversity is a hard topic to cover when it comes to Charleston, I feel like, just because a lot of people keep getting pushed out of the area that were native to this area, you know, even with just like the sea islands, even with North Charleston becoming more gentrified. So yeah, it's hard to tell. I know I haven't been out much, so I can't really do like a full, full review of first impressions, but when I went to downtown, there was like nothing but white people. When you go to certain areas there, of course, it's like a little bit more diversity, but I think overall, because we are in a pandemic, it's hard to tell who's in the area because Charleston is a tourist town and it's also a retirement town. So I think about that a lot now that I've moved here and there's a lot of older people. No offense to them, but I know there's young people in the area. It's just I, there isn't as much to do right now. There are definitely people that look like me here and I'm so appreciative of that. I appreciate that so much in the city. I just think I need to make friends and kind of learn more of the ins and outs of, I guess, being black and in Charleston. Traffic is pretty heavy and there seems to be a lot of development in the area. And just looking at the cost of some of these houses, 300,000, 400,000, 500,000 even, I wouldn't consider them the nicest, especially at that price. I would feel a type of way if I bought a house for $400,000 and I didn't even have my own mailbox in my yard. You don't have a big yard. You don't really have a front yard or backyard, no driveway. You're on the street. To me, it's kind of odd. I'm not really going to get into all the different license plates that I see and all the different flags because, of course, Michigan, Ohio. I see a lot of Florida, Georgia, New Jersey, a lot of like, Midwestern and Northern states. Obviously, I know that's like a big thing here, and I feel like maybe me being born and raised in South Carolina, I'm not going to buy a house that I don't have my own mailbox and that I don't have my own driveway, a garage, certain things. I'm just 
I'm not going for that, but. Making friends, again, it's a pandemic. Like, like I mentioned in my video on living in Dallas, I've done Bumble BFF and kind of chatted with people, but it's honestly, I'm hesitant to go out with people because I do not want to catch COVID and I don't want to pass COVID on to anyone else. So I've kind of been hesitant with that like, part of like, making friends. But I do think like, once it gets warm, I'm going to try to like, get out a little bit more in a safe way. Weather-wise, I feel like I'm going to mention this in any video where I'm talking about living in the South, it gets cold. December, January, it was pretty cold and it rained a lot. So again, when people say, like, oh, you won't need a jacket if you move to South Carolina, you definitely need a jacket when you move to South Carolina. I don't know why people say that and I don't agree with it. It gets cold down to like the 20s and then not even including the wind chill or what it actually feels like. So it gets pretty cold and it rained a lot. And I think it's suspected to rain a lot going into hurricane season. So expect a lot of rain if you move here. Get some nice rain boots. Get a rain jacket and rain boots for both the winter and fall and the spring and summer. Cost of living is like my main thing. It's really, really high here to not have a public transportation system that is super efficient and kind of goes more into places. It's definitely developing quickly. Sometimes I get confused because where are these jobs that people are moving down here for and some people are just retiring or it's people moving that were closer to the peninsula I guess but are moving out maybe to have more affordable homes and better school districts is what I'm thinking. Overall I do like living in Charleston. I think I will enjoy it more once conditions are better and also once I'm able to make friends and have a group of people down here that you know I can hang out with, chill with, go to restaurants with, that kind of thing. But I feel like the pandemic is definitely kind of putting a damper on my experience in Charleston. I will be checking back in probably of course in the summer. Hopefully I will have made some friends that I can actually physically see and be able to go to maybe some events. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know what you think in the comments. And as always, please remember to like, share, subscribe, and comment for more videos. Thank you again.